Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike and this is the Narwhal Nautilus. This is a pen that Narwhal gave to me at the Atlanta Pen Show, I believe, back in April. And I've been using it pretty well nonstop since then and I need to make a video about it because this is a pretty cool pen and I think the best of the Narwhal offerings. So, let's take a look at what this pen is like, some features and that sort of thing, and uh, yeah, kind of go over this. This is one of the Ebonite versions and this is an Ebonite that they were only selling at the uh, pen shows in 2022 so I don't know if you can find this one online I could not and I couldn't figure out what the color was so I'm just gonna say it's the pen show ebonite but this comes in many different finishes and that sort of thing at a variety of price points between $150 and $195 which I think is a really good price point for this pen it turns out so take a look at it it is obviously a fairly large pen and it has uh, rose gold trim going on here the trim is a little bit busy I think here here on the uh, the cap band it's kind of hard to read but it does say narwhal uh, and then on this side well that says narwhal what does it say yeah it says narwhal on both sides it's actually kind of hard to kind of hard to make out it's a little bit busy there on the cap band I would say maybe you know uh, you know a few fewer waves on here or just leave the the name out of it entirely would maybe make it a little bit easier to read then you have these portholes which are also rimmed in whatever matching trim uh, you have for the clip and all that and these portholes will let you see if there is ink in the pen, although you do kind of have to angle it so that you're seeing through because they are on only three sides. So they're kind of like this. And so you need to be able to see across a side. Uh, let's see. Can we see through this? Let's grab a flashlight. and Yeah, there we go. If you get it, if you get it right. Right there. This actually has a fair amount of ink in it still. I keep re-inking this with the same ink because I like it quite a lot. So you can see through there. It will tell you if the pen is out of ink, but it's not uh, It's not obtrusive, and I think this is actually a really nice feature. I've liked that ever since I first saw it. You also have a, a ring down here. This is the blind cap to uh, use the piston. This is a piston filler, so you can't see the pistons and such in there because it's ebonite, obviously, but turning this will move the piston. You'll just have to trust me on that. It's full of ink. I'm not going to do it on, on camera. Then you have this clip which I think is a pretty good clip I like the rounded shape I think it goes with the overall sort of I don't know hot dog shape of the pen so I think that's going pretty well it does have a nice amount of spring to it I haven't managed to spring this despite putting it on you know shirt plackets and that sort of thing the normal places that you would put uh, put pens like this uh, but it hasn't sprung or anything like that I think it's pretty good on the finial up here you'll see this is a numbered edition can we get that to I get that to show a little bit. It's hard to see because it's very reflective. Uh, this is number 400. Uh, no, so, sorry, number 150 out of 400. They put the 150 on the bottom and the 400 at the top, which is <laughs> which is interesting. But uh, 100 out of 450. All right, let's uh, let's get inside here. Opening the cap. Nice cap threads. Uh, no like weird squeaks or anything like that. It does take a few revolutions to get the cap off. Let's see. Um, Yeah, just a little bit over two turns to get the cap off, which I think is totally fine. It's perfectly normal number of terms, turns. Uh, nothing weird going on in here. No inner cap liners, no exposed screw threads or anything like that. So that's uh, that's pretty impressive. There must actually, now that I'm thinking about it, like there must actually be another piece in there. Because otherwise, where does that clip go, though? So there's got to be something else in there. Maybe this is um, like a glued-in piece or something. This little one with a step. I don't know. I haven't take, I haven't tried to take that all the way apart. Then you have this, which will butt up against that step and keep your nib from drying out because it limits the amount of air volume around the nib, which is always a good feature in a pen. I like seeing that step. It's a good place for that step. The nibs are reportedly made in-house. I'm not sure uh, what they're doing with nibs these days, but these do these nibs are pretty good in my uh, in my experience. This one is a broad, and it's not marked with a size. For some reason, the broads just don't have a size marked on them. I don't know why that is, but Frank looked at it. He's uh, uh, one of, I believe, co-owners of Narwhal. And is like, yeah, no, this doesn't have a marking. That means it's a broad. And it is a pretty broad steel nib. It's um, as you can see here, just a tiny bit stubby, perhaps this broad. 
but a uh, nice smooth nib in any case, and it does have a narwhal on there. Now you'll also know probably that narwhal has changed the spelling of their name to something that looks like Navalur or something, but they insist that you still say narwhal and just pronounce it narwhal. That was done because they were not able to get trademarks in certain countries because a narwhal is a sea creature, and so they said, well, you can't copyright or um, trademark the name of a sea creature which like whatever so narvalur or something like that uh, but very nice looking pens let's look at this next to some other pens and then do a bit of a writing sample and uh, we'll be on our way all right so here we have it next to several other pens uh mostly piston fillers because i don't know i don't know that seemed like fun so here we have the narwhal i want to say school kill it's some it's a river in 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 Philadelphia, I, I believe. I always say it wrong, or I'm told I say it wrong. School kill. I don't know. It's got a bunch of letters in it. But this is one. This is the first pen I got from Narwhal. Then we have here the Lamy Safari, the Nautilus here, the Pilot 823, and the Twisby Eco. This is actually an Eco T and is kind of triangular shaped. So uh, it's a fairly large pen, although compared to some other pens like say the uh, Leonardo Momento Zero Grande, the Grande is uh, a fair amount bigger than this pen. And so it's not like the biggest thing on the desk, but it's a pretty large pen. So if you have small hands or prefer a smaller pen, this might not be the one for you. Let's go ahead and take off the caps and see how they compare. I used mostly uninked pens this time because that's what happens if you don't. <laughs> so uh, once you have the cap off, this pen is not gigantic or anything. It's just a little bit longer than the uh, than the Lamy here. Just a little bit uh, shorter, perhaps, or maybe the exact same length. Maybe it's the same length, actually. See, I got ink on my finger. That's what happens. Uh, it's about the same length as the Twisby Eco. So if you like that Twisby Eco length, this is just about the same, although it is a little bit girthier than the Eco is. So that's got, that got, it's got that going for it. Let's put the uh, caps on the back just in case you want to post it. Let's see, does this actually post? No, this doesn't post. Never mind, we're not doing that. I forgot, I, I never even tried to write with this posted. I never even thought about it. Okay, so let's put the caps back on. Let's do a little bit of a writing sample. Actually, uh, bonus comparison shot because I have three narwhals here and so I might as well show them next to each other, right? That would be smart. I am three quarters professional. <laughs> so uh, here's the school kill. This is one that they made with uh, Galen pens. I think this is just uh, just a narwhal. It doesn't really have a, a name on it. And then this is the Nautilus, of course. So let's take the caps uh, of these off just to show them. So there you have them. Uh, the Nautilus is just a little bit longer than the other two. It's it's barely perceptible, just, I don't know, a millimeter or something longer. But uh, nonetheless, pretty nice pens and nibs. I um, uh, I like, as I said, the, Nar uh, the Nautilus best out of these three. I think it's the, you know, the most, the heftiest. I think this one's probably second. Probably the School Kill is maybe my least favorite of the, the current Narwhal offerings. This one's actually a very nice pen. It feels great in the hand. So uh, it feels feels a little bit sturdier perhaps than this one. This one feels, I don't know, it feels a little bit extra light to me. I'm not sure exactly what's giving me that perception, but it feels a little bit more fragile. These have like more of a, more of a, I don't know, a, a sturdy quality to them. Okay, so here's the Nautilus. Let's get a little bit of a writing sample going on here. This is uh, now spelled like this. Navalur. So, see Nautilus again. The nib is a little bit dry from having waved it around a whole bunch uh, here for the last 20 minutes or so. This ink is Birmingham Pen Company. Heron. Which is a very nice sort of tealy green and it's been running really well in this uh, this Nautilus nib. I've liked this quite a lot. I'm also seeing that some of these uh, Nautilus pens you can now get for around 120 so I'll have to revise my my prices here but a lot of that will depend upon the various uh, materials and that sort of things that these will be uh, these will be available in and you can get this nib in a variety of sizes uh, fine up through double broad I haven't tried one of the double broads yet although I would like to and also I hear they're going to have gold nibs for these which uh, which could be interesting but the steel nibs have seemed to be very good so I haven't uh, I haven't I don't really have an urge to get this one in gold so no problems here with some faster writing 
and that sort of thing. It writes very nicely. Uh, and it came well tuned from the factory. I haven't had any. I haven't had any need to have this tuned up or to do anything like smoothing or anything like that. In fact, all three of these pens that I've had from Narwhal have come very well tuned. So uh, no complaints there. I'll give you a little bit of the stub as well. This is the stub nib, which will give you a very nice uh, wide downstroke and then a much thinner cross stroke. So. Good stuff there on the stub as well. Uh, this one's also a broad and not inked, so I can't really show you that one. But the uh, the broads and the stubs and the uh, the mediums, I have a medium somewhere, have all written very well. So I can definitely tell you that for sure. So there you go. Um, this has been the Narwhal Novelur Nautilus, which is available in ebonite and, pl and um, uh, plastics and all kinds of things. And I imagine they're going to keep making more iterations of this because it is just a very nice nice design and uh it feels good in the hand i i really like this one with the uh, uh with the ebonite it also has this nice flare at the bottom of the section which i don't know if i mentioned and it um it keeps your fingers from sliding around the ebonite feels good it's a good length and weight so yeah this is a pen that i've enjoyed a lot more than i thought i was going to and i thought it was going to be pretty cool so thanks very much narwhal for uh giving me this pen to check out and y'all uh you know, you can find these wherever Narwhal is sold, and uh, that's it. You'll see me in a future video. Uh, that's it. Peace out.